because then it's awkward to just like. Um, great. Okay, so yeah, the title of this talk is Theoretical Foundations for Data-Driven Algorithm Design. And um, my goal in this talk is to give you a high level motivation of this area and also tell you about the kinds of questions that we ask in this area and the key challenges. So an important property of those algorithms that are typically used in practice is broad applicability, the ability to solve problems across diverse domains. And I think this is perhaps best illustrated by integer programming solvers, which are, of course, one of the most popular tools for solving combinatorial and oftentimes non-convex problems. And they just have a staggering array of applications, including routing, manufacturing, scheduling, planning, finance, and many other areas. However, these very broadly applicable algorithms can oftentimes have unsatisfactory default out-of-the-box performance. So for example, they can have slow run times, return poor quality solutions, among other downfalls. And one of the key challenges is that these very broadly applicable algorithms often come with a ton of tunable parameters. So this is certainly true, for example, of integer programming solvers like Cplex and Gurobi. Cplex, for example, comes with a 170 page manual describing 172 different tunable parameters. Oftentimes, domain experts are left to tune these parameters by hand, which is just a notoriously time-consuming, tedious, and error-prone process. But with a deft configuration of these parameters, these algorithms can be used to solve very computationally challenging problems. So this raises a question, what's the best configuration of these parameters for my particular application domain at hand? Whatever configuration is best for solving the routing problems, that a shipping company has to solve day after day is probably not particularly well suited for solving the scheduling problems that an airline has to solve. Uh, another great example of a computational problem with many different applications is clustering. And there are many different clustering algorithms you could use. So here, for example, are five different clustering algorithms, which I've used to cluster these three small clustering instances. And you can see that some of these algorithms work really well on some of the instances, and not so well on the others. So this raises the question, how should I select the best algorithm for my particular application domain? Well, in practice, we often have data about the application domain in which we'll be using these algorithms. Data we could potentially harness for the process of algorithm selection. So given a bunch of different algorithms, which algorithm should I use? Algorithm configuration, so given an algorithm with a ton of tunable parameters, how should I tune that algorithm's parameters? And even more broadly in the context of algorithm design. So for example, a shipping company will have access to all of the routing problems it had to solve day after day. A bio lab will have access to all of the clustering problems it has to solve week after week. And an airline will have access to all of the scheduling problems it had to solve over the course of a year. So the use of data together with machine learning in the context of algorithm design has been studied pretty extensively over the past two decades or so, and has led to breakthroughs in fields such as constraint satisfaction programming, integer and linear programming, designing algorithms for economic context or mechanism design and computational biology, among many other areas. And here are just a few of the very early papers to think about using machine learning in these algorithm design contexts. However, almost all of this research over the past two decades has been purely applied. There's surprisingly little known about this topic from a theoretical perspective. But this started to change about five years ago, and there's really been a surge of interest in using machine learning and data in the context of algorithm design from a theoretical perspective. 
And in the last half of this talk, I'll tell you a little bit about um, theoretical progress on data-driven algorithm configuration. So how should I tune my algorithm's parameters for my particular application domain? Okay, so what would this look like? How might we hope to use machine learning in the context of algorithm configuration? So first we would fix some parameterized algorithm, let's say CPLEX for integer programming. And we would receive a training set of typical problem instances from my specific application domain at hand. And a bit more formally, we assume that this training set of typical problem instances is sampled from some unknown application specific distribution. So for example, this could be a distribution over the scheduling problem an airline has to solve day after day. My training set is the set of all uh, scheduling problems this airline had to solve over the course of a year. We run some optimizations and we return a parameter setting which has good average empirical performance over my training set. And by performance, I mean, for example, good runtime, solution quality, memory usage, and so on. Okay, so this high level uh, procedure raises a few key questions. First, how should I find a parameter setting which has provably good performance over my training set? This has been studied pretty extensively from an applied perspective over the past two decades, but just in the past few years, there's really been a, a lot of interest in this topic from a theoretical perspective. Um, and it's a very challenging problem and lots of open questions for me. Second, no matter what parameter setting I come up with, can I somehow guarantee that that parameter setting will also have good expected performance on future problems from the same application, but which aren't already in my training set? So here expected performance is really a proxy for future performance on future problems that I'll encounter. And this topic we've also studied pretty uh, extensively over the past few years in many different contexts, including integer programming, clustering, computational biology, greedy algorithms, and designing algorithms for economic contexts or mechanism configuration. So I just wanna conclude with a, a high level overview or what are the key challenges in proving these types of theoretical guarantees in these algorithm design contexts. And it's really that in these combinatorial domains an algorithm's performance is just a notoriously volatile function of its parameters. So you could imagine, for example, I'm tuning some parameter row along the horizontal axis and I'm measuring performance on some instance like runtime. And it's just a very volatile function with many jump discontinuities. And intuitively, this is because in these combinatorial domains, if you just tweak an algorithm's parameters by a little bit, you can cause a cascade of changes in the algorithm's behavior, which causes these jumps in the algorithm's performance. So overall, the algorithm's performance is just a very complex uh, function of its parameters. And this is unlike functions that we really understand well from a theoretical perspective in machine learning, where there's typically a fairly straightforward connection between a function's parameters and its value on any given input. Since we don't have this predictable structure in the context of algorithm configuration, we have to understand what structure is there, which will allow us to provide provable guarantees. Um, so with that, I'll wrap up. Um, I'm happy to talk about this more um, in detail afterwards take any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Alan? Thank you, this is very interesting. Uh, can you comment on what's the input uh, when you're given a new problem? What are the things that you know you look at to decide what kind of time this needs? Yeah, um, so the input would be just, for example, in the context of integer programming, it would be an integer program itself. So this could be, uh, for example, um, the scheduling problem that an airline has to solve today. And we want to do this really quickly um, using data and machine learning and information from all the scheduling problems that we've had to solve in the past. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was wondering like, what are the, like, do you look at the, like the dimensions of the problem or, you know, some similarity because you have, you have the previous data and you want to see, you know, how does this yeah. map or, you know, correlate with the previous data. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of this research, not all of it, has been under the assumption that there's one single fixed 
unknown distribution over the problems that this we want to solve. So there's one distribution over the scheduling problems that this airline needs to solve. And there are also also then relaxations, but that's kind of the main model that people have been working in. Um, and then the, the guarantees that you give do typically depend, say, on the number of variables of the integer program or something like that. All right, thanks. I think we'll save other questions for the break. Uh, join me in thanking Ellen and all the speakers in this session. And we'll start again at 11.30, so it's not sure.